of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, please remain standing for a moment of silence for the sick, handicapped, departed, and the military personnel of this community. And especially remember the people who lost their lives 16 years ago on September 11th. Thank you. A roll call, please. Mike Palmer? Here. Bruce Galaducci? Here. Bill Henderson? Here. Neil Lyons? Here. Joe Colosimo? Here. Joe Galaducci? Here. Bert Cherry? Here. Captain Rayfield? Mm -hmm. Thomas McCormick? Here. 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 Fire Chief Rochilio, South Virginia, Masiadola. Hold on, Bridget. Yeah, not about the things out of the church. All right. Uh, call our visitors. Um, Gary Tony. May I present? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I'd like to address Council and the Mayor on two letters that I received from Lori Collins, our manager. I would like to start here and then put them in their identical letters on a date that we're making. The most recent letter is today. You'll see the first letter is September 18th. Uh, you'll see that it pertains to a right of way that is between the properties of 1055 Bank Street, which is where I reside, and also 1057 Bank Street, the adjoining property right next door. Uh, the specifics about the letter that are lacking, although I appreciate the two letters because I know she has to do her job. The, Specifics that are lacking are a complainant, a specific complainant is absent. Also, there is no law or ordinance stated which is of so called violation. That's why I wanted to address counsel as to what specifically I have as a right of property owner on the property as to what the right way is. I have photos here. I'll just uh, get some more convenient. Is this in reference to the bricks and the spikes that you have on the Not spikes, sir, but it is a brick. Okay. What's the purpose of this? Because I'm going to show specifically what it is and where it's located. What? All right. uh, you said there's no legal support in the talk about right of ways. If you and I, I can maybe sort this up a little bit. That's in our right of way for the road right of way. That object. It's dangerous. It shouldn't be there. That's the purpose of the letter. I contest that fully. Well, it is, it is on its face dangerous. There's four spikes of rebar sticking out of the block, the purpose of which evades me. Uh, can you share are, that with us? Yes, so good. First of all, they're not four. And second of all, it's not rebar. Uh, also, the actual right of way to measure it, I'd like to know if anyone has actually measured this, since it's actually specifically three feet five inches on the 1055 Bank Street line location of the property. The right of way was never put in the right of never put in the right of way. That's where the whole case is. I need to verify. Yeah, I, I, we will have our engineers kind of what we've eyeballed it, and I'll have them verify whether or not, but I believe when you measure from the center line of the road out through where our space is, that's within our space, number one. And if it is within our space, if you decline to have it um, removed, for public safety reasons, it will be removed. Sir, I have other evidence to present. That's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, they probably about a minute up there. And, this, and again, if you have an issue generally with an enforcement action, there's appeal rights and whatnot, constitution is not the body for him to bring this out of um, If that is within our road right away, it will be. And if it's not, it's still a danger and, and frankly, a liability to any owner. If a car runs over that, a person steps on it, or whatever. So to the extent we determine it's in our airspace, it will be. I uh, still have to contest it because there are numerous. You can contest it, but if it's in our airspace, it's going to be removed. That's not what the legislature Well, the enforcement action is asking you to kindly remove it. I guess from your presentation tonight, you're declining to do that. Uh, correct. Okay. And all I'm saying is, based on my advice to the board and the council and to the manager, is that if that's in our airspace, it's going to be removed. I'd like to present to council numerous airspaces which are being violated, which are not being enforced. 
There are also civil, well, those are civil matters, and, and, and again, this is not the forum to contest this. And then I suggest the contestant state who they are in the letter and bring this matter to a the law. law. As far as the law, whether there's any complaints to receive, I actually under the law, right from the law in Pennsylvania, those are protected because we don't uh, disclose for purposes of, you know, maybe untoward consequences to uh, persons who wish to complain about things to occur. We need to complaints. They need to be able to have the confidence and comfort of knowing they're not going to be outed for actually making a complaint about something in there that they have to deal with if they wish to have the government. I understand. Help them. I ask you, sir, who's the complaint? I just told you that under the law, we don't disclose who the complaint is. So. Because it doesn't seem like to be much of a matter. No, it doesn't. It, no, you're missing the point, sir. I Whether or not there's a matter when you have an enforcement action, whether it's a zoning matter, a code matter, what is often practice, First of all, if it comes to our attention because we drove by and saw it, then we are uh, asking you number one, can I finish please? Yes, sir, number yeah. two, when we receive complaints under the law, we're specifically instructed not to share the complainer with the complainant with the person who pledges that because, you know, folks have unpleasant consequences when they, you know, well, May I finish? Yes. Considering that, sir. The other part of it is there is no specific charge as to what the law or ordinance is. We don't need a law or ordinance. That's our airspace. If there's a public safety issue, and we believe it is a public safety issue, do have spikes sticking out of the sidewalk in our airspace? Well, I'm not going to quibble about what they are. It's a dangerous thing sticking out of the space. If it's in our airspace, it's going to be removed if you decline to remove it. And if it's in your airspace and you don't remove it, then you'll. You know, you can risk whatever civil liability you have or don't have, and if your neighbors have a problem with it, they can take that up with you in the civil courts. Our only interest is in our airspace, which is our road right away. And we are empowered as a property owner and a government that owns that airspace to make sure there are no objects that could be uh, dangerous to public safety, to pedestrians, or any other. I don't care whether it's a tree blocking a sewer, whether it's a bush blocking airspace, or whether it's a thing that has bolts, rebar, or whatever you want to call it, sticking out of it. We've determined, I believe, that that's not a thing that should be in our airspace, and we kindly ask you to remove it, failing which it will be removed once our engineer certifies to me that it is in our airspace. I would like to okay. add two measurements because I measured the four out. We will. We can request that. Uh, I'm anyway. requesting that for the record. We can put what you like in the record, but what we're going to do is once we determine it's in our airspace, we will. Uh, I want to know if this decision be made because I understand it can be resolved with a. It's not a council decision. decision. We're empowered by council to take these actions. We've advised them what our recommendations and our actions are going to be. Council is not directly involved in this in, 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 other than giving us the power as the administration of the borough to take this action. We've shared them our thoughts and what we intend to do, and that's what we intend to do. I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jay Steck. <coughs> Hi, right. you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thomas, 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 Mr. And tell him what he did or didn't sir, do. Sir, yeah. I'm, I'm speaking, sir. Right. Okay, and I'm going to address my thing. I just want to voice my opinion on how angry this gentleman was. Oh, yeah. Okay, because I've been dealing with this stuff for years, and I'm going to start off with when I opened a business, tried to open a business. Okay, because one of my complaints is a business in Bridgeville that looks like a junkyard. My complaint, mine, okay, was I had to have my dumpster inside the building, okay? You show me one business in Bridgeville that has their dumpster in the building, okay? And the property, Lori knows what I'm talking about, okay? And the property, this guy, okay, ooh, you got me going, dude. I'm all fluttered now. So I had to have 
my business, and I want people to realize this, okay? A business, if I was working on an automobile, my garage door had to be done during business hours, okay? My dumpster had to be in the building, okay? If I was working on the vehicle, it could not be outside, it had to be inside, okay? And I had to show two parking spaces per vehicle that was going to be worked on. Okay? Now that is harassment to try to get me not in the building. Okay? My first meeting I paid $300 for, it was table. Okay? Why would you table a meeting that a gentleman paid $300 for? Okay? If anyone can explain that, I'd like to know. Okay? And I had a vehicle parked. It, it was an auto detail shop. Okay? I went up. It is required by law, according to their laws, okay? 300 feet up, 300 feet down. Not one person refused to sign my paper, okay? The person who was in charge of the planning commission says he's never seen a, peti a petition with no denials, okay? Thank you. Here's the officer I'm talking about. In this auto vehicle, I reported to the police, had no door on it, and it was parked on the street for two weeks, okay? I had a vehicle parked in front of my house with no inspection sticker on it for three days, and it got tagged, okay? This is one vehicle because the first one got moved that was there, okay? This is a second one, okay? The dumpster is still on the street today. According to the borough's ordinance, okay, people, since he wants the, you know, the law, you're not allowed to put your trash on the street until Tuesday night for pickup, okay? This business, okay, his or he rents the place. If he owned it, maybe he'd take care of it a little more, okay? This is on the street, clearly, clearly on the street, and there's a body bumper. So if you go past that property, Sir, okay. can I see the picture? Yeah, here. Jay, uh, so, Jay I took the picture so that. Well, I'm just explaining to the people because I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. We're going to send them a letter. No, that, that place should be shut down, okay? There's cars down there. He's doing illegal painting, okay? According to the EPA, which I am going to contact the EPA because there's more than one pro property that I'm talking about, okay? Where do you think when the junk vehicle is parked? Where's all that oil and stuff going, okay? It's going on the ground, it's going in the creek, it's going in our drinking water, okay? Elka Sand's not picking it up. It's the people in Westview where Char Deer's Creek flows, okay? So we're not drinking it, but other people are, okay? So, you know, I have a lot of issues. But I forget a lot of shit, okay? I'm not perfect. And now, I have an issue, okay? My neighbor, okay? I'm being bullied. This is going on for four years, five years, okay? So, here's this, and I'd like to, it's a bathtub. How many people seriously went to Home Depot and seen a damn tub in, in the Home and Garden Center, okay? I just put in a nice addition, try to beautify my property, which the borough's going to benefit because they're going to raise my taxes. Okay? So now I gotta come out my house every day because I got a smart ass for a neighbor. Sorry, Chad, is that okay? Okay. We got kids in there. Okay, oh I'm sorry. Well he heard it, he says it. Uh, <laughs> who wants to walk out of their house looking in the bathtub? No, seriously, okay? This ain't the country. You know, okay, she, Lori says there's no ordinance, okay? Sure, to me, it is junk. My neighbor in the back, Mr. Mike Bruni, okay, gets harassed because of junk in his yard. Okay, there's no standing water, so it must be fine, because when I ask Lori about it, she goes, is there standing water? Well, it's a bathtub, it could hold water, it might be plugged, I don't know. But it's weeds, okay, it's weeds. And I get, my wife goes, why do you let that bother you? I said, because it's wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. No one up here would want to look at a goddamn bathtub no. in, in, in front of their house. 
every day when they walk out. So now, I come down to the borough building, you're going like this, Lord, because you and Cheryl was the only ones in there Friday, Saturday, okay? My dog's outside barking, okay? She barks at everything, but me, I always check. My heart's been thin, okay? There's the guy, hold on. Please don't sidetrack me, because I got dementia, okay? So I don't want to forget, because I'm on a roll, baby. You can thank your buddy, McDermott. Ah, uh, shit, what was I saying? Okay, the dog was outside barking. I go outside to the dog. Lori, will you look at me? Because I hope you think this is funny, okay? Is it really? Okay? Crackhead Bob is what I call, okay? The guy that works for George. George is my neighbor. His last name is Shempo or Shepo. He's an electrician, fine businessman. Really would want to hire someone. Who harassed that? How old was Grandpa? Eighties, in his eighties, harassed the old man, squirting the dogs. Chief seen in the videos, in that. Okay, it's the kind of people deal with. Okay, it's got a long history. Okay, and it's amazing they moved and pots have never been called since. Okay, so my dog sparking, crackhead Bob. Okay. It's got a plant from Kmart for a dollar fifty, probably because who's going to plant flyers now? It's winter's time, okay? Jay, how's this look? What do you think I'm going to do, Lori? I called him every name in the book, okay? My wife had to come and grab me because I'm a nut job, okay? And took my manhood away from stopping the choke at me, okay? Ten minutes later. Another gentleman comes down and is pacing in the garage and he got crazy eyes. Okay? He's crazy. Okay? Guy's goofy. Went to threaten Mr. Bruni at the Italian club because he called George. Okay? So now I'm dealt with him bullying me, which I ain't afraid of him. Okay? By no means am I afraid of him. Okay, I'll go for him like slice butt. But I'm mature enough, my health, I can't, or I'd be in jail, okay? He's pacing up and down the driveway. Then he gets on the phone. He's spray painting the tub. He's painting the tub, Lori. He weeded the tub, and he put flowers in it, and he spray painted. And why did okay? he do that? And why? Okay, to taunt me. To taunt me. You understand? And if it wasn't for my wife, okay, kind of reminds me of a smirky. Yeah, I'm not going there. So, <laughs> just remember, you're on the record here. I know I'm on the record. Out. That's why I'm tired. Remember what you said. Okay, I know what I can say. I know my constitution. It ain't no, I'm, I am very smart. Okay? So I just want you to know, Lori, okay, I would like to know how he knew that I come down the borough building. I Why would he, hold on, okay? Why would he, the other time, time, okay, I was down here at the council meeting, and his dog, he turned me in, okay, you'll love this, he turned me in, because I had a basketball size hole in my garage. I live on a dead end street, nobody goes by except the people that's going to buy dope up the street, okay? Because we find a pistol in the, in the back there, on the steps, okay? I go on and on and on. Okay? And I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> but anyways, this needs to stop, Lord. Anyone watch Fear Thy Neighbor on TV? Mm -hmm. Every, yes. Come on, someone. Yeah, Chad. I never heard of it. Maybe you should watch Fear Thy Neighbor, okay? Yep. This is what's happening, okay? Thank you. Yeah, I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. Huh? Do the next subject. Let's get it. Drying this out. Go on. Uh, I want a no parking, okay? By my garage. Like, remember I said, nah, I'm worried about it. I want no parking sign put there. This gentleman, to show you how ignorant he is, okay? Bruce ain't listening because he heard this shit for five years. This food for Sorry, five years. Sorry, please. Jay. Okay, what Jay. Jay. I, I, Jay, what did I tell you? I did. I apologize, okay? So You're on anyways, strike two. Huh? You're on strike two, okay? Uh, but anyways, the no parking in that no, what's that you call it? A no name alley? The alley with no name. The alley with no name. Can we name that tonight by anything? How about Hillary Clinton? 
<laughs> Take him away. For Donald Trump or something. There were some Bernies, maybe Bernie Sanders. Okay? Uh, these people got two junk vehicles parked in their yards. Uh, and they're parked in the alley. Uh, I don't know what the feed is for a stop sign. Okay, but there's a stop sign on the corner. Sir, I'm talking to you. Please pay, you know, don't be ignorant. I'm like you was the last time. I know you are. You can't ahead. talk to someone while I'm talking. It's very ignorant. Apology. Yeah, apology not accepted. For the record. Uh, I like to get a no parking on that side, that street, because if you can take 70 feet of no parking in front of my house, like I discussed, because that lady hit the boulder because she was trespassing with her automobile. You got no parking on the, the boulder. That alley. I almost got hit walking my dog. Now you're going to text. Okay. You're very ignorant and rude, sir. <clears throat> No, you think he's giving you a buck. I don't care. There's no timetable. There is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, it's right here. It's right here. And I like that. Okay, well, thank you, people, for who's ever given me a couple minutes. Uh, and what about the pond? There's a pond that's three and a half feet deep on borough property. There's not been a fish in there in three years. It's all full of algae. Lori seen it. Actually, Jay, I just talked to Mr. McDermott about that this evening because we had another issue with something in the right of way. Yeah. And he gave me the authorization to have them um, take it out of there. Okay, because personally, I don't believe it's a right of way. It's a street. Well, it's actually. Well, it's in our street right it's, it's, it's a street. It's actually, Did I do one with them? No. It's uh, actually, no you, you blew it with me, buddy. Uh, uh, you disrespected that last gentleman. It's actually he's like. on the street. It's, a little it's, bit on our pavements. No, it's the street, because I, I know the property lines, because I spent enough money for it. But it is, it is taken care of. Yeah, you, you want to see the picture? No, no, she said it's, I'm good with the picture. It, it, what you're asking yeah. about, it's got taken care of. That's, that's why I, well, I don't know if it's taken care of. That's why I wanted to go on That's why I have all the pictures here of everything that we talked about last week, so that I can address Show them a picture of the pond, please. I don't have if it's getting drained, it's okay. Yeah. Well, we don't have that. I don't know if it's getting drained. How long does he have to have to do that? Is there anything else? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for her answer. A, I'll send him a letter, give him 30 days to take it out. Okay. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. And I will be notifying the EPA on that building, too. Okay, just for your information. Hey, Lenny, sir. They know what I'm talking about. Bridgeville Greater Area Land Club. Um, we um, we're have, getting ready to have our first annual spaghetti dinner. I want to invite everybody. Um, get some flyers here. Keep on passing along. Um, basically, the Lions. We started. We start. we founded in January this year. Um, we raised some money. We bought the police uh, some um, automatic electronic defibrillators for the police cars. This is going to be a, a big fundraiser for us. You know, we're looking for support. We're looking for people to show up. Um, spread the word. Um, I'm here to invite everybody. I've got tickets. If anybody wants to get any tickets in advance. Thank you. Can you send me an email on that? And I'll put it on our website. Okay. You know what? I can scan this right to them. And we'll put it on our website. Is this, okay? Is this kid going to be here? Maybe. Uh, you know. <laughs> I, I can't make any guarantees who's going to show up. <laughs> the, the, event, I'm sorry, the event is Thursday, October 5th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Alpine uh, Hunting Club. Thank you. There's, there's extra seats here if you'd like. Uh, Nicholas McClevy? McClevy. McClevy. Sorry. You guys mind if I record him? Go right in. You guys should wait. You're going to come on in here? All right. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Nicholas McClevy. 
Tonight I am here to fulfill requirements 9A and 9B in the citizenship section for my first class rank. These requirements um, involve first um, what obligations and constitutional rights do I have as a citizen. Any questions for us, or are you? Uh, no, I, um, and the second one was um, investigate an environment issue affecting my community. <laughs> so he, he needs like three specific obligations he has as a citizen. Sure. And then he has his. Go ahead, keep going. Uh, and then I have a. Uh, uh, I did a little fact on things. So yeah, yeah, keep going. Um, on October 26, 2015, Toxic 10, an air pollution report released by the Penn, Penny Environment Research and Policy Center, starting that Allegheny County has some of the worst air pollution in the United States. 10, industrial, industrial uh, pollution. Polluters in Allegheny County emitted a total of 1.4 billion pounds of, to of toxic pollutants into the air in 2013, including substances like uh, or linked to cancer, breathing problems, heat dis um, disease or heart disease, and nervous system damage. Um, that was rank one. Uh, rank one. <laughs> rank, rank, rank number one was car um, carpenter. Um, powder products and as well this um, facility melts down metals for purification and has reported releasing toxic metals linked to cancer. This facility um, shares an address with um, Universal Stainless and Algae products um, number seven offender on, on the list. That Fabrication plan reports emitting toxic metals including chromium, lead, and uh, manganese. Are you aware of this report and what is our community doing to monitor um, the air pollution? Uh, one of the problems is, it, is it says it's in Bridgeville, but it's not in Bridgeville. It's a Bridgeville zip code, but it's over in. It's in Collier County. So, but it, actually, we, we, we are aware of. Um, some of the stuff that's going on. As a matter of fact, they, they just took it down and they're doing some maintenance on it. Yeah, we have an air monitor. Yeah, so it's a ramp. It's part of a ramp. The actual is from the Bay Mill University. It's been full of Bay Mill University of San Diego. And they hooked up on top of our building here. And there's probably four or five different types of sensors and then measures um, carbon monoxide, diesel particulates, all different types of uh, data from the air flow. And, and it relays it back, it's all through the internet, it relays it back to the to Carnegie Mellon, and they monitor it, and they have these all over Pittsburgh, all around the town. So they can measure air quality, it's part of the air quality initiative, where they measure air quality all through Allegheny County, because like you said, Allegheny County is one of the worst. Uh, uh, so so we're, that, would we're, be, we're that would be one obligation, right? Because he brought it up to find out. So what are a couple other obligations that he would have as a citizen? He mentioned rights, right? You asked about rights. Do you have? Um, right, yeah. Yeah. What obligations and constitutional rights do I have as a citizen? One of them you're exercising right now. I was just right. going to say, right. you're free speech, you're doing it now. And you've seen it, you've seen it in action. <laughs> oh, you've been here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've, you've seen it, you've seen well, both sides of it, you've seen it. If you're going to learn, learn the best of it. <laughs> and you also have the right, as others, you've also seen tonight too, not only in free speech, but in the same constitutional for the First Amendment, you have the right to petition the government grievances and whatnot, or compliments, and, 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 and to participate, actually, in the government. Uh, you know, it, it is interesting that you came tonight, too, and, and <laughs> local government, you know, local government is quirky, and it's not, you know, clean all the time, but uh, one thing I, I admire about, and I think we all do this, 
this is the only place, you know, everybody goes Harrisburg, it's Washington, you know, this is the only place where you can come, and he knows it too, he, yeah, he, he, he comes and lets us know how he feels yeah. all the time, right? Yeah. This is the only place where you can come up 10 feet on the same level with your government and have it out with them, and you're on toe-to-toe -to -toe equal level with, with all of us, so that's, to me, what's wonderful about it. Thanks, guys. And how, thank how old are you? I'm 12. I just turned 12. Though. You get a, you get a rank coming up when you're 18, and that's the vote. That's the most important right that we have as as voters, as people, the citizens of the United States, is the vote. If you don't like something, you can you can wish your. Opinion. Well, they hear that all the time at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, all those folks too, and I'm you didn't hear the terms and all, but everybody also that we deal with. And we're very sensitive to whether it's the police department and their chief or whether it's Lori and us dealing with folks. Um, it's due process. Okay. We, you know, we act in a vernacular fashion. We talk in plain English with folks. But we're always sensitive about people's due process rights, whether it's the person who feels victimized, whether it's even the person that maybe is you know, not the victim in the case. And they have rights of appeal. We have rights, and you hear how we want to hear her laundry on complaints because there's a social good in this. We want people to be able to kind of call them and us and tell us stuff without us outing those folks. And at the same time, folks that are actually in our hair trigger, so to speak, they have rights too, and we have to be very sensitive to giving them notice, telling them what the problem is, what the source of it is, and how they want to be and they have rights to appeal that and, and actually succeed, defeat them, actually, in the market. Great. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you. I'd like to know if I had your view on television or on YouTube a little bit later, so you can watch yourself. So here we go. We'll all watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna, good it'll episode. be a good bus ride to school tomorrow. We'll have lots of time for that. Just show all the friends and school buddies with that. Tim's range is going to go up. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. This is thank the you. second time you guys have given time to Nicholas, so That's thank right. you. Uh, Mr. Ball Fryer. Right. Yeah. 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 Good job. I did, I recorded the Thank you. Excuse me, I'm Bob here to talk about traffic congestion again. When I was here last month, uh, one of the engineers from Gateway Engineering uh, expressed uh, negative opinions about uh, the importance of having a left turn on Washington Avenue uh, for the people who want to go up Chartier Street. I think some of the information was misleading. He didn't, mean it intentionally. I don't, I don't think they took the measurements. I just want to remind you that very quickly here of why. Well, well, you know, what well, uh, Mike Haberman said sorry. last month yeah. was from the meeting we had with PennDOT. And PennDOT told us at their meeting from their study yeah. that there were not warrants in place to make a left hand dedicated turning. Lane, so the short what do you mean by warrants? Warrants are a study. They went out there and took traffic counts during the morning peak, which is from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., and the evening peak from probably 4 to 6 p.m. or 5 to 7. It all depends on where you look at. So the numbers were not there to justify the expenditure. I believe the expenditure was somewhere on the order of 750 to a million dollars to put a dedicated left turn lane in. Well, okay. I'm here to plus, address that. I'm plus, here to address that. plus, let me ask you, let me add one other thing to it, Bob. Right the other cost and the concern that PennDOT had was there would be a significant impact onto writing. When you take and you put that left turn lane on there, mm -hmm. you need to widen the road, you need to acquire right of way, the right hand turn in and right hand turn out of the parking lot at Rite Aid closest to Chartier Street would be eliminated. So not only are you taking their land, there was an economic impact that PennDOT was afraid that Rite Aid would have consequences with. So it would have taken everybody in and out of the, the access which is closer to the post office. You mean the one on, the, are you referring to the one on the on, this is the drugstore here. You are referring to the in and out going into the uh, drugstore if you're going north? Yes, right there, right there in that corner. No, go ahead. 
Okay, so those were Pendot's concerns, and they did not feel that there was justification in place. Okay, well, like John, to, John, let me yeah. ask you something, too, to, just for to clarify. Correct me if I'm wrong. In addition to the challenges with runway <laughs> acquisition, there were serious elevation issues and yes. airing issues. Also, um, issues from a traffic standpoint of whether they want to actually encourage people to do that during that. Well, that's true, Tom. And that was not, that was yeah. one thing. So, so there was a wall that would have been built along there, which even right. because there's a difference in elevation there, and they weren't sure that you know you would get enough people using. I think their, their counts were somewhere on the order of like 14 cars would be anticipated to do that. And it sounds to me like somebody ran around the block 14 times to get that number at 14. So, hey, Joe. Wasn't there also an issue with the design? If you add a lane, it moves the, the other two lanes out, yes. which affects the bridge design itself. It's, it makes the bridge cascades. Yes, it, 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 it just, it's a domino effect, Bob, with what they were well, to do. Well, I'm with a few comments to do already made, right? Can I just say one thing? That there were, there were representatives from Kendall in the room. There were representatives from South Bay. There were representatives from Allegheny County from the SPC. SPC, PennDOT, um, Consolidate. You're pointing and, and PennDOT on this, saying PennDOT doesn't want this. PennDOT and, actually gave us a drawing for with the lane, without the lane, right. and we said don't There was a general forward. consensus of the room that for that amount of money for what we were getting as far as zero to 14 cars making that turn, um, and what the amount of money that we had for this project right now, the general consensus of everyone was that we weren't going to do that design, well, not just Penwood. Good. For the third time, I'm here to refute those opinions. All right? Excuse me. Let me make it clear. I, I mentioned to you before the addition, the seven lane bridge, which is something that I'm very in favor of. That's the seven lane bridge. And also, they're putting on uh, another lane, as we all want, on the Chartier Street. <clears throat> what that's going to do is, you see the long dotted lines and the dashed lines? Those will become permanent stacking lanes for cars that want to go across the bridge and take a right <clears throat> onto one uh, I-79 North, the other uh, Route 50 West. The point I want to make that doesn't seem to be getting across here is Bridgeville uh, we'll have two lanes coming from South Hatter with a bridge into our business district, which is what we want. But you will not have two lanes leaving our business district going into South Hatter or anyplace else. This, this, the right lane is a continuing right lane to North, and the lane right next to it is shared. That's, that lane is shared by vehicles that want to get out of bridge over to South Head, but also the ones that want to take a right, excuse me, uh, on uh, toward the uh, Route 50 West, which means we have one and a half lanes coming out of the bridge. Yeah, the thought, no, I want to explain this to the people in the audience. Uh, first of all, that's why I mentioned the cars. The cars that are going to be in this lane and going right on West on uh, Route 50 West, <clears throat> all it takes is one car sticking their tail out is out here. That means the, the, the evacuation of bridgeville traffic is completely blocked. Also, see where the other green uh, rectangle is? That's another What does this have to do with the left-hand turn? Can I complete? I'll be glad to tell you. There's another potential obstruction. With the, with the left turn that they're uh, laying there, the Pendock wants to go into all these, and there's only space for four cars there. The same thing exists there. When the fifth car tries to get into the all the left turn lane. Likewise, if it sticks out for half, a, if just one part of the rear fender sticks out, it blocks that lane. For those two reasons, and this restriction that's already built in, even with a seven foot lane, you have to have a left turn stacking lane here in front of the church, for the people that go up Church here Street. And let me address the minimum number of cars that make a left turn up there. First of all, <clears throat> Bridgeville, all, of, all six of the regional major roads leave the Bridgeville and end here. Unfortunately, nothing's been done to resolve the uh, reciprocal traffic congestion for the past 35 years. 
uh, the the road of Chartier Street up to the uh, Bank Street and right on Major Road is one of the three lanes. There's like three places, three people. When people are heading south on uh, on uh, Washington Pike, there's only three play places they can turn left and drive east. One is Barrier Road, obviously. The next one is Station Street. Chartier Street is the other third. We don't have the, the luxury of allowing that opportunity to not take advantage of that opportunity. And I'd like to address the so-called few number of people that try to take a left turn there. The people in Bridgeville in the area aren't stupid. After 30 years of trying to take a left turn there and almost in, in, in blocking everybody behind them through three traffic light uh, cycles, if you think if people are going to continue to go down there, you're wrong. Right. Okay? You're absolutely but, right. That's my point. But if you did have a left turn stacking lane, then they would they would start using it on a regular basis. It's not but worth a million dollars, Bob. It, it, I mean, let's talk, the post it, office to my house isn't worth a million dollars. Let's go, yes. to go that way. It's not a million dollars. It is. It is. Bob. Excuse me. <laughs> let, let me let me address your your theory. First of all, I think Mike Mike said it was uh, how much seven hundred thousand dollars went. I'm Joe, I'm sorry. It's, it's 750000 of a million dollars in one. Okay, yeah. tell me something. Did, every, did anybody ever talk to uh, the management people at Rite Aid and ask them if they'd give us, they'd give Penn off the land? <clears throat> did anybody ever consider the sidewalk that's there now? <clears throat> I guess it's responsibility. There were a number of engineering issues that overrode the right way acquisition. It was issued. There wasn't a. It, 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 Period. I, I think they spoke about four reasons, one of which was right away acquisition. Well, that's what I'm mentioning. Has anyone ever talked to PennDOT? It became academic. academic once they decided for the overriding issues not to approach it that way. But, wait a while. The fact that I'm pointing out that the basis of their decision is flawed. First of all, no, okay. two, two, yeah, yeah, two studies have shown that 50% of the people living in the in the, this market area, have been driving around with Pritchell South Bay traffic congestion for 35 years. That means that any traffic come done on this bridge or anything around there should be doubled. The calculations are flawed. Matter of fact, the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission miscalculated the traffic volume on that site right there by 12 years. That volume of 25,000 cars a day there was occurred 12 years before their calculation. So you, you can, if you want to give up on this, it's a mistake. I'm suggesting that you look into it more carefully, more specifically. Can you submit this to Mike? I'll be glad to. Yeah. Well, when, when he gave his presentation, you were actually specifically invited if you wanted to make a comment or make a critical comment back to Mr. Hayward. But Yeah, but I, I, I only asked him one question. I didn't want to get into it. Now, all of this is what we were asked to submit back to him instead of taking a meeting time to go yeah. over it. You're going, to, you're going to address me about meeting time? No, no, we're not, I'm not. No, I'm just saying. Mike's our engineer. Right, that, that was actually part of the reason I asked you to submit it. No, right. no, that's fine. I'll be, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, but uh, one other thing I want to point out. And well, yeah. the other thing, too, don't, when we talk about time, yeah. this is stuff that we've seen over and over. And you haven't, you yes, haven't yeah. seen that. I want to point out one other thing that we're, where Hagelman or whoever has been doing it. Mike's, Mike's a highly competent engineer. I've talked to him many times, and we agree on a lot of this stuff. So I want to point out that's some mistakes. They mentioned that the drugstore would lose a substantial number of parking spaces. They mentioned the inclination between or the steepness between a right turn here and getting to the standard level of the lot would be uh, ne negative. That's not true. The radius of those turns going in there right now is about 20, 20 feet. If you increase the radius to 40 feet, it makes the inclination very uh, attractive. So the inclination, the difference in elevation is a flawed argument. Number two, as far as you see these See this row of parking right here? Someone mentioned, I can't remember if it was Mike or somebody else, <clears throat> that they would lose those six parking spaces. That's not true either, because you see this red area back here? <clears throat> it's painted. All you have to do is eliminate the paint in the area, and you would have a, these, the length of these spaces are about 19 feet. You'd have another 19 feet behind that. The same exists for here. This red line here is a 10 foot wide sidewalk. It's wider than the platform you're sitting on. If you, if this 
road and it's moved back, if it's a 10 foot widening here, 50% back would be about a five foot widening. All you have to do is cut that 10 foot curb down to five foot curb with all the cars to back five feet further. So there are definite miscalculations and flaws and whoever's been doing it, I think you should look into it. Thanks for your time, Bob. Don Paul. How's it going? Save the best for last. Yeah, sure. Real quick. Hey, I just, <laughs> just a question. Uh, sure. I, I went on the internet. You guys got a grant for traffic lights. It's not the only thing. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Did you? Did you grant, grant for traffic lights, right? Did that. Did that. Did that. Yeah. Sure. I, I was just curious why why we have, I'm, it's great that you got a grant I and mean, that's huge. Uh, but why do we have to get a grant? Why do we have to get a grant for state traffic? Traffic lights are the are the, uh, uh, the responsibility of the boroughs, not for the state. That's the first question we all ask. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go tell somebody who's had them. Mark. <laughs> Nobody could answer that question. That's why even when they put them in, we have to maintain it. Yeah, we have to, we have, we have to uh, maintain yeah. the traffic signals. Yeah, we have to. I know they're like a million dollars or something, so obviously the state has to put them in, right? I'm like, yeah. they're, they're a couple hundred thousand dollars. Oh, is that? I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, that's still possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. Thanks. No problem. Thanks. Here's three minutes, maybe two minutes a second. <laughs> you win. You can reserve those. You win. You can, you can probably reserve two minutes for the next meeting. I'll give you the next caveat. Just right. Yeah. 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 Now you need some paperwork. This young lady's here for a school card. Ah, what a night, huh? Here you go. Yeah, you can hear What kind of questions do I ask? Jesus. Two points. Yeah, I'll stop. She has to come up with state for two minutes. Yeah, she's going to take half of the side. Um, Go so, uh, minutes. Uh, the motion of the borough council regarding the minutes of August 14th, 2017, regular meeting as submitted. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those against? Motion <laughs> carries. Resolution number 2017-09, for PennDOT requirements 1.10.14 signs and banners across state highways. Uh, resolution designating the intention of the Bridgeville South Bay Rotary Club to place one banner across the state Route 50 to be installed September 12, 2017, and moved October 8, 2017, for the Rotary Club Chili Cook-Off. I would be happy to say. I'd be happy to second. Uh, you all better be here. <laughs> <laughs> all, those, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, resolution number 2017-10. Motion of the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2017-10 as per PennDOT requirements. 1.10.14 signs and banners across state highways. A resolution designating the intention of St. George Church to place one banner across State Route 50 to be installed October 8, 2017, and removed October 30th, 2017, for the Mediterranean Food Festival. Second. Yeah, Bruce and Bert, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Same day. Same day. Same day. Same day. Same day. Uh, police pension, uh, minimal useful obligation certification. Uh, motion, borough council regarding receipt of the police pension, minimal useful obligation of $62,574 for the 2018 budget year as prepared by Manager Collins. 
uh, pension contribution for 2019 has been calculated to continue at maximum permitted by Act 6000-8 percent. I'm oh, sorry, 600-8 percent. The actoral review is conducted each year to visit the required contribution. So moved. Bruce, I'll second. And Bill Henderson, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Non-uniform pension minimal municipal obligation certification. The motion of the Borough Comp regarding the receipt of the non-uniform pension minimal municipal obligation of $28,137 for the 2018 budget year as prepared by Manager Collins. So moved. Uh, Bruce Second. and, and Joe Clausimo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number four, uh, 2017 CCTV project. The motion of the Borough Comps regarding the remittal of current estimate number 4-2017 CCTV project to advance plumbing and draining in the amount of $4,018.84 for work completed to date. Uh, estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. So Bruce, second. And for Cherry, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, bill list, motion to borough council regarding the September 2017 bill list. I'll move. Second. Uh, Joe Bucci and Bruce Calarucci. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, payrolls, motion to of council approve the payrolls of September 15, 22, 29, and October 6, 2017. So moved. Bruce? Second. And Joe Cosmo, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Monthly reports, motion to accept and pay any commissions due. The August 2017 Real Estate Tax Collector Report. All those. Joe Rucci. Second. And Bruce Calricci, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the July 2017 Financial Report. All those. Joe Rucci. Second. Bruce Calricci, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the August 2017 Police Report. So moved. Who's that? Bill Henderson. Yeah. Second. And Bert Cherry, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. And a motion to accept the August 2017 zoning report. So moved. Second. Uh, Bill Henderson and Joe Clausen, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. Um, administration reports. No, no reports, sir. Uh, finance. Joe Perucci. I know it's hard to believe, but I really don't have anything to uh, Parks and Rec. Joe Klaus. No report. No. Uh, public Works. Bruce. The thing I want to say is our guys have been working, uh, getting stuff ready for the paving of Main Street and that. They've been working on manholes. They've done several other manholes that I know of uh, around town. Uh, the sewer drains and that. And they've been very busy, so that's all they have. Perfect. Uh, public Safety. Bill Anderson. Yeah, I'd just like to. Uh, send our appreciation to the police department for their efforts and the neighboring police departments during the construction phase of this the disruptive town. And they made a very difficult situation as bearable as possible. Uh, I can tell you I stood in the middle of that intersection years ago. That is not a fun place to be. He was there all day. Yeah, all day long <coughs> uh, for, for a couple of days. So uh, again, my uh, gratitude towards our police department as well as the neighboring communities that helped us. Thanks, Bill. Uh, the mayor is at the 9-11 uh, ceremony. Uh, Chad's out in the hall. hall. I'll see what's come back in. Um, so, sir, um, I'll be submitting my review report to you. I don't have anything yet. Okay. Uh, your sites? Thank you. Uh, CD44 pre application. We submitted a pre application to Shaw West Call for renovations and improvements to the restrooms at Chartier's Park. We're proposing both restrooms with new fixtures, partitions, and amenities to the ADA compliance and uh, bring us into the uh, 21st century of the restrooms. I knew that was good. <laughs> now we're curtain. Ah, Crush. 
mirrors on the ceiling. Not taking it. When the CD44 applications came in, they have to meet certain criteria. And they're not going to be able to do Yeah. And I thought, oh, Joe is going to be so excited. So <laughs> okay. Uh, to approve the uh, payment to AAA payment for the uh, CCTV. Soul Light Instructors also continue on point repairs. We should be probably wrapped up here by the end of October with point repairs. Backflow preventer project, uh, AAA piping, cleaning the glass, the lateral information last week. A little behind on that, so we're going to uh, forever review that to get the. Uh, Contract put together. They're still supposed to do St. Clair Street. They, they, they need to do it on our property. So we're okay. Our 2017 pay the maintenance program. I was in communication with Young One. They're supposed to be in town next week to do work on our roads. Uh, Bower Hill Road probably get started with that within the next two weeks because they have to order the uh, the uh, traffic control detour plan to take the traffic down Walnut Street. Nothing to report on the walk around the park. Washington James Development. Uh, Lori and I met with them on the 14th of, uh, of June, and I think what they're doing is waiting for that uh, zoning variance to clear the 30 days before yeah, they, they, they actually called me today. Okay. Is that what they're going through? They're waiting for the 30 days and then they'll be able to submit. Yeah. And then the Chartier Street, Washington Avenue, and Chartier Street Bridge, there's not the new report since our meeting on uh, July 19th. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. Um, Chief, did you have anything? I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> You're not well, the you only are. one. I have one question for um, our borough engineer. When you mentioned the Bower Hill Road project and yeah. the detour of Baldwin Street, that's fine for the regular traffic, but they're going to have to have an alternate detour set up for truck traffic okay. because we're going to have issues with trucks coming down trying to make the left on the McLaughlin and then the right, right on the Baldwin and vice versa because when they come off Washington Avenue down Bower Hill Road to go right, left on Baldwin and then swing a left on McLaughlin, okay. that's going to be tough. I think whenever the gas company had that shut down a couple of years back, mm -hmm. they detoured the trucks on the Painters Run Road okay. from Bower Hill and I think we detoured them up Bank Street to Lesnit. Okay. I, I, if memory serves, I think you're right. Correct, but let's we, let's, you're let's, right. let's talk about it tomorrow. Yeah, this has to be something, something different for the church. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Uh, historical side, Mary's not here, but she has her program. The one thing coming up this month is the Little Sawmill Run Railroad from 1851 to 1897. It's Lincoln Legacy, and by Dave Aiken. So the other one there is not commercial. We'll tell you about those next week. That's always for the historical society. Uh, planning Commission. Uh, you know, Gail, you know, the Planning Commission? Wait. I know you're going to add a few words. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a headache. <laughs> Gentlemen, as well as you know, we had a joint meeting. So, no sense me to replicate everything we did. Uh, on our planning commission meeting, uh, uh, as you, um, I had some idea, but I always refer it to the professionals. I don't try to change. They had so many years of college and experience. I'm not an engineer. If it was to make a close, I would be the first one to do, want to do that. I'm not trying to deviate anything from the professional people. I'd like to express some idea. I know we got to do something with Baldwin Street and Bar Hill. You all know we got 20 year planned. So now we, when are we going to start from A to Z or from Z to A? Then we need the help for the professional people. I'd like to start something, a little bit of time, until we get to that. Thank you so much, and we'll have a better things as the time goes by. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. It's not on the agenda, but uh, Becky, you have anything for library since you're here? Um, I actually just have an announcement. I have put the posters around Rachel Love Your Library. Um, those are provided from the Allegheny County Library Association. So in the month of September, 
You can go onto the Virtual Public Library website. You can also get there to the public, Virtual Public Library website by going to the Virtual Borough website, and you can link to find out that if you donate in the month of September, that the Jack Buncher Foundation will match um, your donation up to $500. And the monies that would come to your library, you must select the library of your choosing, um, they would go into the general operations. So that's just something I just wanted to give you a heads up, and I think it's kind of a nice sign this time around for that um, fundraiser. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Borough Manager, Lori. Uh, I'd like to say one thing. Um, just for the record, Lori Collins works her butt off for this borough. So I can appreciate people being upset with things, but at the same time, it's rude to be how negative they were towards Lori. Uh, I just, why on earth would she want to work for the borough being treated like that? Um, you can have a disagreement. But you need to show respect. This woman works her butt off this borough, and and uh, I think that was very poorly done today. I'll second it. Thank you, Joe. Joe, fine, and I'm sorry. Let me apologize on my behalf for my behavior, um, and maybe I was expressing what Joe kind of just nicely put into words. Maybe a little offensiveness uh, that Joe Sites and I and all of us have to worry. Uh, there's history behind what you saw before came into the room tonight, and again, I apologize if I maybe didn't have the best of form, but maybe being a little offensive for, for our manager. So, thank you. Any other old business? I have one more thing. I'm just four <laughs> things. Um, I'd like to thank the community uh, on behalf of the chamber, as well as uh, the fire department, since uh, Bill's not here. Um, it was a great time, a great fundraiser on Saturday, and there's a lot of people there looking to help out with both uh, organizations. So I'll, I'll throw out the thank you for both. Any new business? I got a quick announcement. Um, on September 30th, it's a Saturday down at Treacherous Park. It's the second annual Ron Shaw Memorial Softball Tournament. Um, it's a really nice event. There's like eight softball teams. They do round robin. They play all day. It starts about 8 o'clock in the morning goes to about 8 o'clock at night and bands, uh, music, a lot of good food. Um, so if you have a chance to... They launch in Boston, it correct? Well, it's just Boston. <laughs> Last year, I'll say, it wasn't just a <coughs> softball. People were yeah. coming down just to hang out. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was food and drinks and it, it was yeah. a very good time. So, I have one more drink. <laughs> uh, since we won't have a meeting before October 7th, uh, the, the banner that's going to be put out on 50, uh, the Bridgeville South Bay at Rotary uh, Chili Cook-Off is October 7th, so I, anybody that can advertise it for us would be greatly appreciated. It's Saturday this year, October 7th, 1 to 4. Uh, lots and lots of different people contesting to be the uh, prize winner of the best chili. So, in fact, uh, Chief Chilio is one of the judges this year. Chilio. So, uh, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to try to hang on, uh, it was good last year. All right. Uh, adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. Uh, Thanks. Thank you.